Okay, so hello everyone and welcome to another ICTS virtual spring seminar. Today we are happy to have Professor Masanori Hanada from University of Surrey with us and he's going to tell us about color confinement, Bose-Einstein condensation and emergent geometry in gauge gravity 12. Over to you, Professor. Okay, thank you very much for the invitation. And uh, today I want to talk about uh, how uh, bulk geometry might appear uh, in uh, gauge gravity duality. So in gauge gravity duality, quantum gravity or black hole are described by non-gravitational systems like a matrix model or super mills or maybe C plus system like SYK model. And the duality claims that they are exact same thing. So somehow this uh, non-gravitational system should know about the uh, quantum gravity. In particular, this non-gravitational system should know the bulk geometry of a uh, gravity dual. And I want to ask how uh, such miraculous thing is possible. So I think in the uh, late 90s, when gauge gravity duality emerged, I wasn't uh, in the field. Yet, so I cannot uh, uh, precisely tell what the people are thinking at the time, but uh, I think people believed simple encoding along the line of Banks, Fischer, Schenk, and Saskin proposal, and also uh, in slightly different context by Witten, uh, can work. I, th I think people have believed that way. And I will explain this simple encoding uh, procedure in the uh, next few slides. But in 1998, Porochinsky gave a very nice argument against simple encoding uh, prescription. And uh, also, Denis Saskin uh, explained it in a more intuitive manner and uh, convinced people that uh, such a simple encoding cannot work at least without some uh, refinement. But uh, somehow, early this year, I noticed that uh, there is a bug in this argument in Porchinsky's argument, and actually simple encoding can work. And uh, in, in order to understand how uh, this nice argument fails, uh, we can see curious uh, connection between smooth bulk geometry and uh, recently found the connection between color confinement in large energy theory and the Bose-Einstein condensation. And uh, by understanding these things, we can uh, give uh, interpretation of large limit of uh, gauge theory as a second quantization in gravity side. So this is what I want to explain today. As an example of uh, gauge gravity duality, let me use uh, probably the cleanest setup by Maldasena and also Maldasena and uh, uh, three people from Tel Aviv. Nisan Itzaki, Yakov Doneshain, and uh, Simon Yakovich. Uh, Shimon Yakovich, sorry. Uh, so they claim that the P plus one dimensional super mills is equivalent to type two super string on black P brain background. This P is a special di dimension, and this plus one is time. This theory has a nine minus P scalar fields which describes the uh, direction uh, transverse to D brain. And uh, in 1995, before gauge gravity duality, we then uh, found that uh, this theory can uh, describe low energy effective, low energy dynamics of a system of D brains and open strings. So P plus one dimensional theory can describe the P brains. So the same P here and here. And if we have N D brains, then gauge group is UN. This theory has a potential term like uh, this in a Lagrangian. And if you minimize, if you want to minimize this potential, then uh, they should commute. Okay, so uh, we expect that low energy at low energy scalars are almost commuting with each other, that would mean we can simultaneously diagonalize it. And then if when we simultaneously diagonalize them, 
actually, you know, there is, can be small uh, non commutative part. So, small off diagonal part can survive. But in that uh, gauge choice, uh, diagonal entries are regarded as the location of D brains, as I will explain in the next slide more precisely. And off diagonal entries describes open string excitation. So, uh, location of D brains in this direction is uh, encoded in these scalars. So, this is how. Uh, Geometry can uh, be encoded in met, uh, metrics from a, a D brain perspective. So here, uh, this this picture is for uh, SU four theory. Okay, so we have uh, uh, scalars. So this I can run from one to nine minus p. Okay, and uh, for each matrix, we can uh, take one one component, and then we have we can construct the vector in this space. And this vector would describe a location of the uh, first D brain. And from uh, two two components, we can all again make uh, this vector in uh, R nine minus P. And this vector would describe the location of the second D brain. So in this picture, uh, location in this direction. And of course, you know, D brain can uh, uh, take a bit not trivial shape. Then along this, uh, uh, Along uh, this uh, th this direction, uh, this x can be a function of uh, this uh, coordinate. Then, if we take a different, uh, uh, if we if this is scalar field take a different value at a different point in space and time, then of course uh, uh, Debray can take a different non-trivial shape. And uh, if we read really the off diagonal entries i j, for example, if uh, three four element is a uh, Large, that would mean a lot of strings are excited to be to a third and a fourth D brain, and so on. So, the value of uh, of diagonal entries, so value of i j component corresponds to amount of open string excitation between i and j D brain, according to Witten's interpretation. And there are several ways uh, to understand, uh, several ways of consistency check. For example, in string theory, mass of a string. Mass of open string. <laughs> okay, mass of uh, open string should be proportional to length. So length times uh, string tension should be mass. So if we claim that open string, uh, if we claim that uh, diagonal entries are location of D brain, then uh, like uh, mass of this open string, like first and the second D brain, it should be proportional to distance between uh, these two vectors. Okay, and if you look at the Yamil theory, as I already mentioned, there is a potential term. And if you write this x as a diagonal entry plus off diagonal entry, then uh, and expand it uh, in uh, terms of uh, off diagonal entries, then to reading order, you get this. So ij component get uh, this mass term. And uh, obviously, this mass is proportional to the distance of ii and the jj component. Okay, so this way uh, we can correctly reproduce a uh, mass of open string, which is proportional to length. And also, in string theory, in string theory, we expect some uh, uh, symmetry enhancement pattern when D brain uh, take uh, some specific configuration. For example, if uh, all the brains are sitting on top of each other, we would expect uh, enhancement of symmetry. So if all the brains are sitting separately, then uh, in separate location, we would expect U1 to the N symmetry as a quantum state. But if all of them are sitting on top of each other, then uh, UN invariant state should be obtained. But if in, uh, in matrix uh, model, in matrix language, if all of diagonal entries are the same and of diagonal entries are zero, that would mean no string is excited. Then uh, matrix is proportional to uh, identity. And this is UN invariant. And if N1 D brains are sitting at the same location, N2 D brains are sitting location at the same location and so on, then from string theory side, we would expect this symmetry. 
But if you look at the matrix configuration, this symmetry is precisely reproduced. And of course, you can also check uh, amount of supersymmetry, for example. And there can be many uh, checks you can do. And furthermore, DBRAIN should be with uh, low energy that uh, effective action of DBRAIN should be DBI action. But in an appropriate limit from DBI action, you can get the amino action. So it seems to be really consistent argument. So there's no reason to doubt it. But with this argument, it's claimed that uh, uh, this Yamil theory is low energy, describes low energy dynamics of d and the strings. Okay, so this is uh, not the context of gauge gravity duality yet. Is there any question so far? Okay. And uh, so far, I uh, set the all of the argument to be zero, which would mean all, no OPPO string is excited. But uh, uh, we can imagine that uh, if uh, n1 of the d-brains are sitting on top of each other, then strings connecting these d-brains are massless, so you can easily excite them. So maybe in each block, it's reasonable to have some open string excitations. And then we get some uh, non-commutative blocks, and we expect some block diagonal structure at finite energy. And uh, Banks, Fischer, and Schenker, and Saskin, in the context of a matrix model of M theory, claim that, uh, OK, so these blocks can describe an uh, extended object, like membrane or black hole. And this matrix uh, model, so in their case, they considered P equals to 0 matrix model. So they didn't mention uh, uh, QFT. But this matrix model should describe uh, should describe capture gravity, not just the effective theory, but it should capture gravity. That's their conjecture. And from this point of view, we can uh, imagine various shapes. So maybe we can imagine three blocks, or maybe we can imagine just one block, or maybe we can imagine 100 blocks. So in that way, various multi-body interaction can be described. So this point of view is very, uh, Connect, naturally connects large M and the second quantization in the sense that uh, various uh, different objects can be described from the same matrix model. So they, in some sense, they suggested that uh, this uh, first quantized uh, matrix model can be regarded as a second quantized gravity. And uh, I put almost here just because uh, in, uh, this, in this context, uh, some of the size of the blocks. So some of the block size has to be M. So in that sense, it's almost a second quantization, but there is some constraint. So for example, uh, it's not clear how grand state or you know, no excitation, nothing can be described in this context. But it's almost a second quantization, and it's really attractive picture. And uh, Although they uh, proposed this for matrix model, once Maldasena conjecture is given, it would be natural to imagine that the similar picture can be applied to Q more generic QFT in non-zero spatial dimension. So natural hope would be that uh, this diagonal element equals to location of uh, d brain picture can be used to gauge gravity duality in the sense of the Maldasena, in the well, Maldasena duality. And in matrix model, we, in matrix model, we had nine scalars and that described R9. But if we want to consider four dimensional supermills, so it is five shift equals upon this. In this case, we have the six scalar fields, which naturally describe R6. But we can uh, uh, the comp we can write R six by using a radial coordinate and uh, uh, ang angular part, and uh, this part is S five, and this plus original four dimensional space of QFT can be combined to form S five. This would be natural hope if we apply ideas like Witten or BFSS to gauge gravity duality. Is it clear so far? And uh, uh, I want to give you the argument, counter argument for this uh, naive picture, at yeah, least without uh, some. 
Masanubi, Masanubi, can, I, can I ask you a question? Yes. So if you go back to the previous, previous slide. This uh, one or? No, the next one, next one. This one? Yeah. So here, uh, yes, 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 yes. there is a, yeah, I would like to, uh, you know, point out a uh, sort of um, essential difference between the D equal to, uh, I mean, the uh, D0 brain case and the D3 brain case in the sense that in the D3 brain case, you have a conformal theory and mm -hmm. you, have, <clears throat> you have a tunable coupling, you know. Mm. On the other hand, uh, like the proof coupling can be uh, externally specified. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, in case of D0 uh, brain uh, theory, you, know, you have a running coupling <clears throat> and it corresponds to just uh, a length scale, namely some kind of a lambda QCD, which is, uh, you know, GN uh, to the power one third. So there is a, I mean, there is no, there is no meaning of weak coupling versus strong coupling, uh, like the way you have in uh, the uh, D3 brain case. So in the case of a matrix model, uh, uh, we uh, coupling is essentially so. So what uh, you said is that the coupling constant in a four-dimensional four theory, it's a, a this is a, does not have the mass dimension, so it's tunable. And this uh, uh, in a one-D theory, this has a mass to the three power three. So yeah, it's, so it's a, yeah, this is, this is what you say that, you know, tuning this doesn't really so make sense. Just, yeah, this just gives a length scale, like in QCD. And, yes. uh, you know, you cannot, you cannot tune this to be some, uh, be in some weak coupling region, say, where you say that the brain description, like the, you know, which is description, the one that you say is uh, yes. more correct. And there's a strong coupling of that. These, these things you cannot do. Yeah, that's a really good comment. And uh, firstly, uh, Firstly, uh, in, in order to have, uh, you know, whether we can use this uh, kind of a probe picture or not, mm -hmm. and whether we have a good weakly curved uh, gravity, which is close to Einstein gravity, that's a separate question, first of all. And uh, when, uh, of course, and uh, in the case of the matrix, in the case of the 4D theory, what I will claim is uh, regardless of the cup value of the coupling, probe mm -hmm. picture itself is fine. But wh whether we can, whether from that probe picture, we can get the uh, weakly come to gravity is a dynamical question. And in the case of a matrix model, it's the same. So we can, uh, I can give you a good uh, uh, probe picture at any, any energy scale, but in order to get good gravity job, we mm -hmm. have to go to strong coupling and strong coupling in a one dimensional theory means this combination is small, which means low energy. So in one dimensional theory, uh, strong coupling uh, is uh, roughly equals to low energy. And uh, yeah, but uh, I will show you that regardless of the energy or coupling, mm -hmm. we can uh, give a good probe picture itself. And uh, whether we can get weakly coupled gravity real by using that probe picture is a more dynamical problem. And today I cannot uh, give you the answer. So I just claim that pro picture can be given and at the strong coupling or low energy, we expect that that pro picture should lead to weakly coupled gravity, but a highly dynamical problem. And I will give you some uh, uh, potential uh, direction, potential method which can be used for the verification. And uh, so this is the next problem we have to do. But uh, anyway, so, but in, even in this model, Although, as you said, coupling is dimensional four. So in that sense, uh, coupling does not literally make sense, but uh, strong coupling, weak coupling translate to low energy or high energy. So there is no big difference, I think. Well, I mean, you know, so um, in case of the, maybe this is not particularly relevant for you, but I'm saying that um, in, in case of the 4D super young uh, case, uh -huh. When you go to um, uh, you know strong toft coupling mm -hmm. uh, by just externally tuning it to have a uh, large value, mm -hmm. then you can talk about uh, you know gravity, but at all energy scales. You know what uh, I mean? Yes, you yes, don't have that's to, true. That's true. That's, say, so, you don't have yes, to yes. say that you know, I have to be 
so here rather your you know if your energy is always expressed in case of the d0 brain in mm -hmm. a, or, or d1 d2 whatever if your energy is expressed uh, in the units of uh, this particular length scale which comes from dimensional transmutation of the mm -hmm. uh, coupling constant mm -hmm. then there is no further uh, you know weak coupling or strong then then you cannot say that then there is a notion of you know this dimensionless which is what you are calling energy here ah uh, yes 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 so uh, i mean you are tied up you are tied up here you don't have that facility that you have in four dimensional young males to say that if it but, is uh, but that's not that's not really a problem so in a sense uh, in a uh, in a the uh, bulk language it just mm -hmm. means uh, to the center of the bulk uh, weakly curved gravity picture is good and to the uh, boundary of the bulk uh alpha prime correction becomes large that that's it and there is a region where weakly covered gravity bell is good here and uh, what you said simply means in four dimensional theory right. uh, by tuning a coupling you can have a bigger region where weakly covered dual gravity is good so yeah. so in that sense this is a cleaner setup in that sense yeah that's, that's right. i agree uh, uh, that the same the same uh, that that boundary that you drew I mean, maybe mm -hmm. you are going to come to that anyway, because uh, the ah uh, uh, yes, yes, it will yes, yes, and I I will discuss both of them. Yeah, Main, yeah. mainly use it, but uh, I will explain how uh, argument uh, uh, made for this can be applied to this. You know what part has to be changed. I will explain. Okay, thank you. Okay, so ma we mainly consider uh, matrix model because uh, uh, notation becomes simpler. But the same argument holds for uh, p positive. And uh, what the uh, uh, Gautam said is p. So I, I just said the uh, you know the same argument holds for p positive. But the p equals to one, two, and the p equals to three are slightly different. <laughs> so we have to uh, consider these cases separately. Okay. So first, let me explain a puzzle posed by Porzynski. Okay, so he said uh, this kind of argument doesn't work. And uh, first, uh, uh, so first uh, state his puzzle in for p equals p smaller than three. P equals to three is slightly different. Okay, and uh, what he said is as follows: in gauge theory, or first let me mention string theory side. In string theory, uh, so we have some bulk space time, and the total boundary of the bulk alpha prime correction, stringy alpha prime correction becomes large. And close to the center of the bulk, alpha stringy correction is small. So supergravity is good. And uh, in a uh, normalization, I will use, so, it's, so the, this length scale can change depending on your normalization. But in the normalization, I will use, uh, if distance from uh, center of the bulk is uh, square root n or smaller, then weakly covered gravity is a good description. But if you go closer to the boundary, then stringy effect becomes large. In gauge theory side, we would want to use a probe picture. Okay, we would want to claim that the uh, diagonal entries describe location of D brains. But what he said is that uh, there is some length scale here, which is actually exact same here. And uh, inside this region, which correspond to weakly curved gravity region, actually matrix matrices are not close to mutually diagonal. And it's, it, as I will uh, explain, we can make argument that uh, matrices make a kind of highly non-commutative fats, and we cannot uh, define the eigenvalues. We cannot simultaneously diagonalize them. And it looks uh, as if D brains are sitting, uh, D brains are even in ground state, the brains are spread out in a big region. Although in gravity side, at ground state, we expect that all the brains are sitting at the center of the park. And uh, so, sorry, we, Masanui, uh, this this picture you have on the right hand side, this is uh, once again. I mean, this is not uh, so. Uh, is something like this would not apply to p equal to three, right? Uh, and in the case of p equal to three, uh, we have a similar length of scale. But this length scale becomes the ADS radius. 
uh, but it's not so, true that if you're close to the boundary that you need to care. I mean, why would you need to worry about large stringy corrections if you're close to the boundary? If you take correlators close to a boundary? Uh, in the case of in the case of p smaller than three, then uh, it's a so in the case of uh, uh, the p equals to three theory, you have ADS of five cross S five. Right. And uh, but uh, when p is three, you don't have uh, this simple structure. It's kind of like d zero looks like ADS two cross S eight. But it's not really product, and actually curvature of the spherical part changes if you go closer to boundary, and the sphere becomes too small, and the string correction becomes large. Yes, yeah, yes, I, I understand you. Yeah, but I just want to clarify once again. So for p equal to three or larger, you do not have this structure, right? Because when you go close to the boundary, you don't necessarily need to. Ah, uh, yes, you are right. Large you are, yes, that's true. Okay. And in the case of p equals to three, so this radius corresponds to our ad. ADS scale, but even inside or outside ADS scale, uh, gravity is good. Okay. But what the Porchinsky claim would mean that the, if you go sub ADS scale, you cannot use uh, this uh, diagonal entry equals location picture. Okay. So if you go very close to the boundary, it's fine. But if in the interesting region, close to the center of the park, there is some problem. Yeah, so I think we understand now that that argument is also not correct if you're in p equal to three or larger. I mean, this was this argument that you can't extract like a flat space limit and so on, which you can do, I think. Ah, uh, so, yeah, 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 yeah. So, and so, uh, so that was people thought it may be uh, over subtle uh, or subtlety when you consider flat space limit. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so he said that uh, uh, maybe this. Uh, uh, Simple way of encoding geometry to metrics, degrees of freedom can be used here, but this is not necessarily the interesting region in gravity. Okay, that was a problem. And the argument goes as follows. So the normalization I'm using is like a Lagrangian is a trace Lagrangian density is a trace of a half of a f mu, one quarter of f mu nu square plus half of a d mu x square minus four over g plus this normalization. Okay, in this normalization, just by using a two-fifth counting, okay, we can show, oh, we take a two-fifth large limit. So lambda g square m, this is fixed. This is a limit we consider. And outside the fourth limit, the uh, still the similar argument holds. Okay, but let's consider this for simplicity. Then modulo sum of power of lambda, which is does not contain any dependence. Trace x square is n square, just because of the fourth counting, because this is a hard to change as long as we consider the fourth limit. And uh, this would mean that. If you, so x i is a Hamishan matrix, so you can diagonalize it. And then if you take a sum of uh, eigenvalues of this, you get n square, and you should have n eigenvalues. So typical eigenvalues of x i square should be n. And the typical eigenvalue of x should be square root n. And this is already a problem because the eigenvalues are too large, and uh, it's you know kind of d brains. If we identify eigenvalue with the location of difference, it's a kind of spread out in a really wide area. Furthermore, again, from two foot counting, we can show that uh, this uh, commutator squared is very large. And if we diagonalize x1, then for x2, x3 to x9 minus p, we can show that uh, this this so I took this I to be one. This is n to the three, but we already know that uh, this part is uh, n because of uh, this. So this is n, and n times something, and we take uh, sum over n squared times, and we get n cube. So that would mean uh, each of the diagonal entry is one. But the trace x y squared is uh, no no tra trace. So if it would mean so trace x i squared, which is the sum of uh, x i i j squared, this is n squared. 
But in this basis, when x1 is uh, diagonalized, each matrix, each of diagonal entry is order one, and uh, there are n squared of them, so we get this value. So it's uh, not diagonal at all. Diagonal entry of diagonal entry, everything is order one. So there is no way to define location. There is no way to simultaneously diagonalize matrices. So in this region, we cannot uh, define location or di diagonal entry. But if we take uh, you know, one of eigenvalues to be very large, much larger than square root n, this counting can change. And we can def uh, define eigenvalues or simultaneous eigenvalues outside this region. This is uh, Polchinski's argument. And because we use only two fifth counting, it's uh, really hard to avoid, how to circumvent this. But still, I want to show that this is wrong. OK, so this is uh, wrong in a bit not trivial manner. Is it a question now or no? OK, so I want to show that actually this is wrong. And uh, this is actual physics. So uh, in a uh, uh, gauge theory uh, language, Everywhere, so this is scale, such a scale doesn't exist. Everywhere, location can make sense. But more strictly speaking, if you go to order one, there's some issue. But uh, as long as you stay uh, larger than order one, then everywhere you can uh, make sense of location, or you can make sense of eigenvalues. And uh, there is no fuzz. So this is what I want to explain. And the Polochinsky's argument consists of three steps. So this is the fourth counting. And from this, uh, he said, OK, eigenvalues of x i squared is n. Then uh, eigenvalue of x i squared to n. This is correct. So people uh, uh, try to find the loophole in Porchinsky's argument. It seems that the people try to fi uh, find the bug here. But this part is correct. And this part is also correct. Wrong part is here. But uh, you would wonder why this can be wrong because you know we I just say the, it has n eigenvalues and uh, we take a uh, sum of n eigenvalues then we get n squared then each eigenvalue is n what is uh, wrong here and the uh, wrong thing is that uh, he uh, he assumed that there is an eigenvalue so okay implicit assumption is that there is a matrix xi which is n by n Hamishan and the trace xi squared is n squared and it sounds very natural because we are talking about uh, uh, Yami theory or matrix model. But actually, this assumption is wrong. You don't always have a matrix in matrix model. And this is because of uh, uncertainty principle. S strictly speaking, OK, so each matrix is not just a C number matrix. Each of them are operators. So we can have a X, you know, we use X hat and P hat because they're operators. And let me just use a standard German. This is a, a UN generator. So this is a power matrix for CO2, German matrix for CO3. And for CON, you can have a generic generalization of a German matrix. And so I just wanted to pre introduce this index, a joint index. Then this x hat x hat alpha p hat alpha, they are just a, a very standard real uh, coordinate and the momentum conjugate, and they satisfy this standard commutation relation. And the point is that each matrix entry is an operator, so it's a kind of a, not just a usual matrix. It's a matrix of operators, or it's a in some sense it's a matrices, but the, each matrix entry is a like a matrix, it's operator. And each operator, each matrix entry has to satisfy this uh, Heisenberg's uncertainty relation. And that, so on this step, implicitly, they assumed such matrix. That would mean they assumed some uh, coordinate eigenstate on which this x hat acts and give a C number. And they diagonalize this. In terms of a quantum state, this is implicit assumption. But this 
is not legitimate assumption because, because of uncertainty principle. If you specify coordinate precisely, then uh, delta p has to be infinite. That means energy becomes infinite. So you cannot get such coordinate eigenstate. So you cannot uniquely uh, specify coordinate eigenstate even uh, in quantum mechanics. And instead, we have to consider wave packet if we want to uh, consider low energy state, which is uh, localized to some extent. Important point here is in the case of D0 brain, uh, D0 brain case, we have x1 to x9. So we have a nine n squared variables. Okay, so we have to consider wave packet, but wave packet is not in R9. Not in R9. So this is wave packet in this space. Okay, and this coordinate eigenstate has to specify nine n squared coordinate. And we have a wave function in this space. And the wave function has to be smoothly extended to some extent in this higher dimensional space. And uh, this matrix is not uniquely determined in the sense that it uh, has some uh, finite uh, size. And if we want to define physically meaningful matrix as a C number, there is a natural uh, candidate, of course, which is a center of wave packet. And I will show you that if we correctly identify C number matrix as a center of wave packet, there is no puzzle. There is no non-commutativity at all. And uh, I will show you that. So we consider a wave packet in this space, right? And we can imagine wave packet localized around some uh, matrices, some matrix value, and there's some finite extent. If you perform gauge transformation, location of wave packet moves. Like this, this one is a, a U inverse YU. Okay, this one is a U, U prime inverse YU prime. So center of wave packet moves following the very standard gauge transformation rule, but shape of wave packet doesn't change at all. So you can define, uh, you can actually diagonalize metric C number matrix, which is defined as a center of wave packet. That's totally legitimate procedure. But you cannot really diagonalize this, uh, this part, you know, I mean, uh, uh, size of wave packet. There's some degrees of freedom which cannot be diagonalized. Okay, so this was a bug. So, so they didn't uh, uh, use this, uh, pro this picture and they just uh, uh, imagine that there is n by n matrix which can be diagonalized. That's a problem. There was no such a matrix which can be diagonalized. Although we are talking about the matrix model. Um, so maybe a uh, question? Yeah, yeah. So the, um, let me try to understand this. So in the nine uh, n square dimensional space, of course, you can consider coordinate eigenstates uh, mm -hmm. in which uh, x, i, i, j, all of these variables have definite values. Uh, yes. You're saying, you are saying that such eigenstates will uh, not be anywhere near the ground state of the theory or some, so, will not be a low energy uh, state. So you you say that uh, we can consider eigenstate, coordinate eigenstate in this space. That's true. Right. And you know, I draw wave packet here, but each point in this wave packet, they are mm -hmm. coordinate eigenstate you talked about. Okay. But imagine that uh, uh, so in this uh, in this here, imagine that you wanted to diagonalize one of them, one of okay. coordinate eigenstate. You can diagonalize it, but if you perform such a gauge transformation other yeah. coordinate eigenstate goes to some other state. So you can uh, you know, diagonalize one coordinate eigenstate contained in wave packet. But if you do that, other coordinate eigenstate contained in the wave packet also gets transformed. And the linear combination changes very non-trivially. OK, there are, okay, there are two kinds of diagonalizations one can talk about. First of all, these um, xi, ij operators they are of course uh, always commuting operators because right because in the nine n square dimensional uh, um, uh, notation 
they are yes. all commu- they are all commuting operators because they are yes. all position they are all position operators That's but of course fun. there is a matrix index so you you may ask about whether in some kind of nine in uh, sorry nine dimensional uh, sense they are commuting or they are not commuting and maybe right because i'm saying that nine in the nine n square coordinate operators they are they are of course they are commuting right. yes they are all commuting right yes. So, there so is for no example, difference. if you if you so you you can specify x right. one one of x, okay? Uh, you can imagine that you pick up one point from here, one point okay. from here, okay? And you can diagonalize that x uh, in the sense that so, but this x most precisely you have x one to x nine here, and you can diagonalize one of them. That's totally fine. You can take such gauge. Okay, that's the matrix diagonalization, not the operator. The matrix diagonal. Diagon- yeah. Yes, that's a matrix diagonalization. But yeah. uh, but here, so if mm. you pick up just one coordinate eigenstate in this web packet, you can do that. But okay. this web packet contains uh, many other uh, coordinate eigenstates, and it's non-trivial linear combination of uh, coordinate eigenstates. What happens is, imagine that you. Uh, so let's use this blue, maybe uh, this. Imagine that you diagonalize this coordinate eigenstate. Okay. But then other coordinate eigenstates are transformed to non-trivial area as well. And as a whole, it just moves the location. And you just see the same web, web packet with the same shape, but in different location here. This rotation is the, the rotation in in uh, the by the similarity transformation of the matrix, uh, the so this is, uh, center of a wave packet changes this way. Yes, and I will show you how this uh, gauge transformation appears. So uh, maybe so, but what I do is if you have just one this x, this x moves to uh, something like u x u inverse. But uh, at wave packet as a whole actually uh, just uh, changes this way. Yeah, yeah, so we we can... perform this. Okay. Yeah, let's see, let's see how how that. Yeah, works. yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, 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 yes. So, so that's a. I will show you a simple uh, uh, expression later. And if we consider ground state, what happens is ground state is a very localized web packet in uh, this space. Okay, and uh, for all nine n squared directions, uh, size of web packet is order one. And there are n squared directions, so you get n square in total. Trace x squared is n square. But this is web localized and gauge invariant. And no gauge transformation can change the shape of this wave packet. So there is no way that you can take one d ray out of here. So it's just gauge invariant. And uh, that this is gauge invariant ground state. This is actually related to the mechanism of uh, confinement. And uh, by understanding uh, similarity between B, both Einstein condensation and confinement, we can understand it very naturally. OK. And in case you want, but maybe you're not comfortable that I'm using a, a non-gauge invariant web packet. If you want to you know, uh, use only gauge invariant language, then you can perform a gauge trans or, or possible gauge transformation to this localized web packet, and you can take linear combination. In some sense, here, so we can uh, usually in Hamiltonian formulation, you would say that you have only gauge singlet constraint or in gauge invariant, Hilbert space of gauge invariant state, like this. But uh, uh, we can also ex- use extended Hilbert space, which contains a singlet, non singlet mode. And we can insert the projection operator here. So here, so this G hat, this G, G is gauge group, like UN. And G is a, so this is a hard measure. Hmm. And if you take uh, this kind of linear combination, then this is a projection operator. And you can start with the extended Hilbert space and insert the projector. And then you can equivalently describe this system. And that the use of a projector is essentially the same as uh, introducing gauge field. Mm-hmm. 
So you can describe the system with or without the gauge field. So this picture is uh, much uh, better if you want to understand the physics happening, deep brain physics happening here. But uh, either way, depending on your taste, you can use both. I will mainly use this approach below. This is really uh, uh, makes everything transparent, but they are just equivalent. And let me give you some explicit example. Mm. <laughs> okay, so uh, in Porochinsky's argument, so I say this part is wrong, right? And this argument only only used to foot counting. Whether you have gravity dual or whether <laughs> it doesn't matter, whether it's a strong coupling, weak coupling, it doesn't matter for this argument itself. Okay. So for example, we can forget about the uh, fermion and we can consider bosonic theory and still it should work. This uh, Prochinsky's argument is applicable if it's correct. And uh, if you like, you can add a mass term here. Still nothing mm -hmm. changes. And furthermore, we can take weak coupling limit. So we just uh, forget about this and we can take a Gaussian matrix model. And even to Gaussian matrix model, his argument applies. And the Gaussian matrix model is very simple and you can write down everything explicitly. So uh, we can understand physics very clearly. Uh, Masanori, can I, can I ask a question? Mm -hmm. So is the original objection uh, related to n being large or the two coupling being large? Uh, just n large. Two coupling doesn't matter. It just as long as two counting holes, it's fine. But I thought in the, but if you go to the, you're of course using the variables X, which are more natural for the Young Mills theory. But if you use the variable X's, which, uh, which directly relate to string theory and therefore supergravity, I thought um, the question so was that the size, this, I mean, whatever they call the size of the of the ground state is the same as the size of supergravity. And that is only valid when the truth coupling is large. Yeah, so what you're saying is, so this argument itself doesn't care whether you have gravity there or not, it's a strong coupling or not, doesn't matter. But if we actually want to relate it to supergravity precisely, we need a strong coupling. But so this is a confusing part. So Porochinsky's argument uh, is an argument against uh, this, uh, you know, uh, gravity peak. So it's kind of uh, argument against, uh, you know, using this picture to gravity. So people assume that this is, uh, you know, some uh, non-trivial thing at a strong coupling, but it's not really the case. Actually, this uses just a large n counting. So it, it's uh, some, uh, something people misunderstood. And people try to find a loophole to Porchinska's argument, looking at the strongly coupled dynamics. That's a problem. It's not really the case. If you carefully look at his argument, although I'm not sure he uh, will realize that or not, but the only thing he used is large to foot counting. And the strong coupling, weak coupling doesn't matter. And the same argument holds at any coupling. And, uh, you know, quote unquote fuzz appears always any theory for the same mechanism and the resolution is also the same whether it doesn't matter whether it's weak coupling or strong coupling so it's a purely large end counting two foot counting and he also tried to apply to m theory region which is not two foot large end limit but uh, uh, if you carefully look at the calculation uh, if you carefully look at the you know, various calculations, actually, uh, even outside the two to limit, the same scaling holds up to some non trivial. So I say that the trace x squared, this is a two coupling to the sum power times n square. And this two coupling can carry any dependence <coughs> in M theory region. But this relation itself doesn't matter. So some non trivial dependence on lambda times n square, it doesn't. It, does hold even in M theory region. So as long as we can uh, falsi uh, falsify this argument into fourth large end limit, the same argument applies everywhere. I see, thank you. Yeah. Oh, by the way, I think it's very early in the US, so <laughs> I'm glad that you're here. <laughs> uh, so anyway, uh, so I want to uh, 
So let's look at the gauge of Gaussian matrix model. It's the simplest example. And if you understand uh, how uh, Polchinski's argument fails here, the same holds, uh, you, you can understand how it applies to strong coupling as well. So I already spent 50 minutes, so I have to go a bit faster. So this is Gaussian matrix model. Okay, so we just have uh, nine n squared harmony constraints with the gauge singlet constraint. And we just identify states related by UN transformation because it's gauged mass matrix model. And the UN transformation acts like this. Okay. And we can uh, write the state in this theory using a folk basis. And the ground state is just a folk vacuum. And we know ground state is just a Gaussian for each of nine n squared coordinate. So ground state web function is just a product of uh, ground state for product of nine n squared folk vacua, which can be written like this. So inside the exponential, we have a trace x i square. That's it. And uh, I say that x hat changes like u x hat u inverse, and then. Uh, X, this X changes like this, you know, this is a, a, an active and passive or something like that. So you, we can uh, perform this gauge transformation to, sorry, this gauge transformation to, to this, we can perform this gauge transformation to this, but uh, it's gauge invariant. So this is just a gauge invariant web packet. And uh, this web packet is obviously localized around the origin of R9 n square. That's it. And the generic web packet localizing other point can be created, uh, uh, expressed as a coherent state in this simple model. So we just, so we want to consider web packet localized around some non-trivial value of X. And then we just shift. So momentum is a shift operator. So we just take this kind of a shift operator and act it on ground state. And it can be written like this, of course. This is a wave packet localized around this point. And if you want to introduce non-zero momentum, you can also introduce this time as well. Okay, and you can easily see that this is a localized wave packet localized around Y and Q. And, but let's consider uh, Q equals to zero case for simplicity. And then, so I say that this uh, uh, Y hat changes to U Y hat U and the P hat changes like U, U inverse, U P hat, sorry, I messed up. X changes like U X hat U inverse, P hat changes like U, then this combination, of course, changes like trace y, u, p hat, u inverse. But you can also read it as a trace u inverse y, u, p hat. OK, so the, after this, uh, after gauge transformation, this part is gauge invariant. It doesn't change. And this p hat receives gauge transformation. But it amounts to the change of this y this way. So the center of the wave packet moves from here to here. And as I will uh, we'll see in this slide, next slide, uh, shape of wave packet doesn't change. Because if we just subtract this uh, y and take uh, you know, uh, x hat minus y to the k and uh, sandwich it with a wave packet uh, centered around the uh, localized around y, then it's just the same as x hat to the k sandwiched by ground state. So shape doesn't change. And it, it holds for any y and any k. So shape doesn't change. So gauge transformation just changes the location, period. And uh, furthermore, if we identify uh, this y as a matrix which describes uh, D brain and the strings, then it's consistent with Witten's picture. 
because, uh, for example, we can imagine n minus 1d brains sitting at the origin, and 1d brains is separated from others. Then such a state, so we take a uh, matrix y to be some special form. So y, y to be 0 and 0, 0, and only this part has no trivial value. Okay. And this quantum state is manifestly un minus 1 cross u1 invariant, because y changes like this. And if you, all the brains are sitting on top of each other, that would mean we act uh, this operator to ground state. And this is a manifest UN invariant. And uh, we can also consider you know, a more complicated, uh, like a, the other multiple bunch of deep brains, but then we just get the correct symmetry enhancement. Also, if we introduce uh, this commutative, uh, commutator part, then, uh, if we use uh, uh, this state, okay, and if we sandwich this Hamiltonian made of x and p hat by exponential minus i trace y p hat times the ground state and exponential plus i trace y p hat ground state. And look at here, this one. This just uh, amounts to the shift of uh, x hat to x hat plus y. And then, due to the Higgs thing, is that then if you use this y to be, take this y to be diagonal, you get this extra term, additional term in Hamiltonian. This is a uh, must term. <laughs> this is correct Higgs thing pattern. OK, so this way, uh, uh, string mass is correctly reproduced. And of course, uh, this kind of uh, construction of a wave packet using coherent state, that's uh, correct only for uh, weak, only weak, recoup weak coupling limit in free limit. And with the interaction, for example, this mass term appear due to Higgs sync. And if G squared is large, then it, it would give a large mass of diagonal entries. So if we just uh, take uh, the same uh, coherent state, then it at some point, if G squared is too large, then energy goes up. So in order to have a low energy wave packet, if we have a large interaction, coherent state is not a, a legitimate state. And we have to take into account this kind of uh, correction. And so the width of the wave packet has to shrink because of this term. And some correction is needed. And uh, I'm not 100% sure how such correction can be described. But one natural construction is that just uh, fix the center of wave packet and minimize the uh, energy. And maybe, maybe there is some correction to this. But I think this is uh, reasonable. And as long as we use this definition, then the picture I explained is uh, totally legitimate. Exact same uh, argument holds. Though we cannot expressly write down uh, wave function analytically. Was it clear so far, or maybe a bit confusing? Um, hello. Hi. Uh, uh, Masnuri, can can I can, can you go to the previous slide, the last point? This one. Yes. <coughs> now it it is possible that you know like um, in a in a particular state. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't have a center, right? I mean, that, that somehow, you know, like example, let's, say, let's, let's, let's say we think about gravity itself. Maybe you are <coughs> saying, uh, so I would say low energy state can be written as a linear combination of wave packet with a well-defined center. But uh, of course, uh, they can have, a, uh, I mean, uh, for example, if we, we just consider linear combination of two different wave packets, there's no center anymore. Yeah, for example, right? You know, like, yeah. I mean, such states are, I mean, at least gravity suggests that there's nothing wrong with such things, right? You know, like, at least in large and, you know, like, you can have well separated things. And I mean, so, I mean, the, so the I, construction I, I, that you're proposing would, uh, mm -hmm. would kind of, you know, like, um, which has simple real gravity interpretation. So, for yeah, example, in a, so what I say, I'm saying here, is imagine that uh, like like if uh, y 
when y and p, y and q are diagonal, then it's much easier to understand. So imagine d brains have a well-defined location and well-defined velocity. Then corresponding to that, this is a natural counterpart of such a d brain system in gravity side. So if you know in gravity side you can specify location and the momentum of uh, d brains. But uh, if you consider more complicated states in gravity side, then this is not legitimate. We we need more complicated construction. Yeah, I mean, I mean, usually that I mean, what I'm saying is that you can have like, for example, two centered things orbiting around. Uh, two each center. Other. I mean, two center black hole. Yeah, things orbiting ah, yeah, around. In that, each other, in that case, two center black hole is probably simple. So you, you take y to be uh, zero and zero and some, some non-zero thing here and here. And this, these two blocks are localized around the different points. Okay. Uh -huh. That's to center black hole. Okay. I'm, I'm yeah. to this Y and Q here are matrices. It's yeah, matrices, yes. So this is a wave packet, wave packet in wave packet in this higher dimensional space. Right. And in the case of D3 brain theory, this is R6 N square to the, I mean, at each point in space, you have R6 N square. So it's a really huge space. So it's like R6 N square times the volume, if you consider D3 brain case. By volume, I mean volume of three dimensional space. Okay, so, and then, so, so now I hope uh, you, now you think that this, uh, you know, using uh, the matrix to specify the coordinate can work. But uh, I showed, uh, I, I just say ground state has to be gauge invariant. And in free theory, it's re uh, reasonable. And we, even with interaction, you, you may think it's reasonable. And I, I think it is reasonable, but, uh, uh, I want to give you a bit more justification. And this gauge invariance of the ground state was uh, important. Because it's gauge invariant, we cannot really change the shape of a wave packet. So, you know, it's, it was really localized at the center. Okay. And if it's not a gauge invariant, maybe by gauge transformation, maybe you could get the D brain scattered around the large uh, region. Then you may not be able to describe a smooth bark. Okay, so why well localized? So, so ground state is well localized in this interpretation because ground state is gauge invariant. And why gauge invariant state is favored? And to answer to this question, I already spent 60 uh, minutes, so I have to wrap up, but I think uh, Mentioning about uh, very important Indian physicist is uh, justified in talk to Indian people. So let me just continue. So let me ask slightly seemingly different question. What is the historically the first example of non abelian gauge theory? And I want to say that it's not Jan Mills in retrospect. This is uh, what Bose and uh, Einstein consider and indistinguishable bosons. And I want to say that this is historically the first example of non abelian gauge theory. And I want to say that this is a historically first example of confinement. Okay, so I wrote uh, this uh, uh, form of a patch on function. Okay, so using a gauge invariant Hilbert space or extended Hilbert space with a gauge field. Okay, and uh, actually this form is used uh, to describe uh, uh, Bose Einstein condensation. So imagine that we have a SUN gauge group and the field content was adjoint. Then this is just a Yam Mills. And this G is a gauge field, essentially. But uh, if we take SUN permutation group as a gauge group and introduce fundamental fields, like vector fields, then actually this is a system of N in this and indistinguishable bosons. And it can be easily seen as follows. So let's consider N bosons in three-dimensional space trapped by harmonic potential. 
Okay, so we have n particles in three dimensions. So we need x hat, y hat, and z hat. And this i runs from one to n. <clears throat> okay, and for each, so we have n three vectors and we have momentum conjugate, but I want to see this to be n vector x1 to xn. And uh, this y can also be regarded as n vector and so on. So this is a kind of a, a SN uh, ve n vector model. And they are indistinguishable. Indistinguishable would mean if we exchange uh, x hat i, y hat i, z hat i, with uh, x hat j, y hat j, z hat j, physics doesn't change. So grant, uh, wave function has to be invariant under permutation. This is a definition of uh, indistinguishable. Okay, but that simply means uh, SN is a sort of gauge symmetry. Okay, so in the extended Hilbert space, we can use a Fock state. Okay, acting so on the Fock vacuum, we just uh, act uh, uh, creation operators. And uh, in if we want to use gauge invariant language, then we symmetrize them. But uh, instead, we can introduce this uh, permutation here as a gauge field. And we can write a patch function this way. This is a very standard way of uh, uh, writing a patch function of uh, identical bosons. And if we, we look at this uh, patch function, okay, so here we are taking a summary with respect to all the uh, uh, excited Fox state, whether they are symmetrized or not. Okay, and uh, the energy, this Hamiltonian acts and you know just to give uh, energy, but it's just a count the uh, number of excitations. And this is sigma hat acting on this permutes uh, indices. Okay, so this is a pattern function and this part measures the amount of redundancy according to Einstein's argument. That would mean, so this one, if we take a ground state, ground state would mean all, uh, uh, for, all n particles are in a uh, Fock vacuum. Then whatever sigma returns one here, Mm. So we take a sum over all elements of the permutation group, and this part becomes n factorial. But in generic excited state, all n's are different, right? All n's also all so this each n this is a three vector, specifying the excitation of the first particle along the x y z direction. So we have n vectors, but if they are all different, only sigma equals to one gives a non-zero result here. Okay, so we get one here. <coughs> and if we have, uh, you know, n of them excited, they are all different and n minus n of them remain ground state, we get this uh, excitation factor, uh, enhancement factor. And this enhancement triggers Bose-Einstein condensation. This is uh, what uh, uh, Einstein found in 1924. And this presentation itself was a slightly rephrased version probably due to Feynman in 1953, long time ago. But you know, this uh, uh, enhancement factor gives a uh, you know, huge bonus for BEC phase. BEC would be in many states in ground states, right? And it's related to SN permutation invariance. So if we consider, if we regard boson system as a SN gauged vector model, then genuine gauge invariance, genuine gauge invariance, by genuine gauge invariance means it's gauge invariant in extended Hilbert space, okay? This genuine gauge invariance leads to this enhancement factor, which is a volume of gauge group, and this enhancement factor triggers BEC. If we consider SUN gauge theory with the adjoint field, namely Young Mills, Actually, genuine gauge invariance can lead to enhancement factor, volume of SUN, which is roughly speaking this, compared to generic state. And this enhancement factor causes color confinement in large energy theory. 
So there, exact same physics is happening for exact same reason. And in both Einstein condensation, we had a partially BC phase. So some particles are in ground state, some of them are excited. And in uh, Yamiru theory, we can have a counterpart of this, which is partially confined, partially deconfined state. So if you have some, uh, if you add some energy to the ground state, you can see that if excitation kind of uh, uh, you know cramp up in smaller region, and uh, this region is left as a confine, then such a state can have uh, this enhancement factor. But if you imagine, you know, so by adding energy, you have to excite uh, some color degrees of freedom. But if it cramps up, then large symmetry can survive. It leads to enhancement factor. But if they are just kind of scattered around and no symmetry survives, there is no uh, enhancement. But uh, this BEC mechanism favors larger symmetry. So excitation wants to cramp up to some block. Okay, so naturally this kind of block appears. And uh, th this mechanism, in the case of BEC, this mechanism works even at the strongly coupled region. And uh, in Yam Mills, we don't have explicit proof in the strongly coupled region, but I think it's reasonable to assume the same can happen in strongly coupled region. And in some simple uh, matrix model, we can do Monte Carlo simulation and we can explicitly check this kind of partially deconfined, partially confined structure, even at the strong coupling. If you are interested, I can uh, give you reference. So, uh, ground state, which is you know vacuum like a vacuum uh, ADS or ADS vacuum, which is just a completely confined, and uh, we can imagine that we can uh, excite some of the B brains and the strings, and then if we have some uh, energy which is not too big, not too small, then we imagine in gravity side we imagine some black hole is formed. In gauge theory side, we, we uh, can expect that a smaller deconfined block is formed. But this part remains confining, and this part can be used to probe the smooth bulk geometry outside black hole. So we can take this, you know, we can take this Y. So we, 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 we consider a wave packet centered around Y. And we take this Y to be uh, some non trivial value here and uh, diagonal here. And we can use these diagonal entries to probe uh, geometry here. So this is <laughs> a bit speculative, but uh, I, I think this is a reasonable picture. And furthermore, uh, if we have, uh, now we know that uh, we can separate the probe you know, away from black hole because the protein skis argument is not really legitimate, uh, whether it's weak coupling or strong coupling. Then we can imagine that uh, uh, some uh, energy amount of energy are loca uh, located uh, in the different point away from the uh, origin of uh, color space. But then this BC mechanism forces each block to uh, each excitation to cramp up to block. So it becomes like a block diagonal structure, which B, Banks, Fisher, and Schenk and Saskin consider. It naturally appears because this receives a large enhancement factor. Then at large end, various uh, different uh, size of blocks, various different objects can be embedded. And the uh, ground state can also be described. And you know, you, you don't have to have uh, excitation all the way down to exhaust all the difference. Some difference can be just uh, staying in ground state. So in that sense, this is really legitimate second quantization picture, it seems. Of course, uh, I, this argument is still a bit hand waving, so more precise, just more, you know, better justification is needed, I think. But uh, it's an interesting picture, I think. I think it's very natural. And uh, if we believe this picture, we can imagine a process like a black hole formation and evaporation, both in gravity side and in gauge side. So first, we have a uh, you know various object uh, scattered in the bulk. That would mean this kind of uh, structure. But then they come closer and form one big uh, deconfined block. This is black hole. Then gradually, small block is uh, excited and the black hole can evaporate. 
Okay, so I think this is a natural picture which follows com by combining uh, probability brain picture and uh, B is equals the confinement picture. So, yeah, so there can be several future directions and what uh, like uh, Schmidt and uh, Gautam should, would be interested is uh, how bulk geometry appears. Uh, if we consider, you know, some uh, D brain, imagine that one probability brain is excited and uh, move with uh, some non-trivial uh, uh, velocity. Then assuming that this construction is correct, then we can compare it with the gravity picture, like using DBI action, where the energy of such system is described by DBI action, or time operation of such system is defined, is described by DBI action. And I think traditional lattice Monte Carlo may be a bit difficult for this setup, but it seems that C.T. Han and the short Han show how to know use the deep neural network to study similar problem, and their result look legitimate. And I think neural network can be ideal tool for study this uh, setup. And also we can imagine some uh, D brains, you know, scattered around here and here. And then uh, in matrix side we have this kind of a structure, and maybe we can integrate out this part. We can integrate out this part, and see how this region and this region uh, how. Uh, degrees of freedom in bulk uh, entangled with each other. Maybe we can uh, use the idea of the target space entanglement entropy uh, developed by uh, several people from India. And my original motivation was actually in a quantum computer. So <laughs> I, I started thinking about this problem because I wanted to see how the brain scattering experiment can be performed on quantum computer. And in principle, we can uh, realize a matrix model on quantum computer. And then using this uh, deep brain probe picture, maybe we can see how, you know, we can have black, black hole geometry and we can uh, introduce one probe deep brain. And we can see how this probe deep brain moves in black hole geometry or how deep brains are scattered with each other on this black hole background. And whether that can be described by Dirac borrowing inferior action or not is a uh, not trivial question. And uh, as I already said, black hole formation and evaporation. You know, studying this on quantum computer is uh, my biggest fantasy at this moment. Anyways, this is my final slide. <laughs> Sorry for extending uh, almost 15 minutes. So in conclusion, simple eigenvalue equals to location picture like Witten or BFSS. This can actually work in the sense that we can define location by using in terms of a matrix. And the important thing here was low energy state was a wave packet. Mm -hmm. This was something people are missing. And this is wave packet in this higher dimensional space. And the appearance of smooth bulk is related to both Einstein condensation. Maybe, maybe. Yeah. And the large N and the second quantization is naturally uh, related if we use BFSS picture. And uh, if we believe this argument, then this uh, idea can be really used for Maldacena type duality. But of course, uh, I just explained the uh, kinematics. Okay, so I didn't really show that if we introduce, you know, those probability brains, they interact with each other, their interaction reproduces gravity or not, I didn't uh, say anything. So that we have to check. And uh, dynamic calculations are needed, but uh, new technology like uh, uh, neural network may be useful. And I, I, I'm pretty much optimistic whether you know we, we can confirm or maybe we can exclude such picture. And uh, maybe we can directly see black hole microstate <laughs> in terms of matrix degrees of freedom. And maybe we can fully decode the hologram to some extent using such picture. Thank you very much. Let's thank Masanori for the wonderful talk. If people have questions for the speaker, you can ask me. Uh, could I please ask a question? This is Kostas Anagostopoulos. Mm -hmm. uh, hi, Masanori. Could, could hi. you please uh, uh, tell me whether the low energy assumption excludes the configurations where the eigenvalues are of uh, different order in N? 
like uh, in, in I mean, when you take trace x square to be of order n square, then uh, yeah. from that you ah. conclude that uh, all, all x are of order, uh, all the eigenvalues are, are of the same order of magnitude, but one can imagine configurations where eigenvalues are concentrated in, in a way and they're, let's say some of them are of order n square and others are of order, uh, I don't know, one or less. So uh, if we consider black hole, then energy is n squared, right? And uh, naively, I would think, that, so if we take uh, y to be black hole, then uh, y i j each i, this is a or really order one and not a zero. But uh, so this is natural thing. And uh, of course, uh, if this, if we, Diagonalize this one of this y, then uh, eigenvalues can uh, spread out. But uh, uh, in this picture, so if this black hole is uh, really feeding the bulk, that would mean this y is uh, really feeding n by n matrix. And then you can diagonalize one of them. And uh, but you can diagonalize only one of the nine matrices determined as a center of a wave packet. Then in this picture, black hole should be, you know, feeling entire, almost entire bulk. Then that eigenvalue becomes uh, as large as square root n is just a natural thing. And so I think uh, if we consider a uh, black hole, then it's literally like the state you're talking about. But of course, a uh, generic eigenstate is probably linear combination of wave packet. So maybe such simple diagonalization is a bit subtle, but we can just take a generic, uh, you know, n by n matrix y, and we can consider such way packet. There's nothing forbid us to do that, and then uh, the situation you said is naturally realized. I think. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any more questions? Um, Masanori, can I ask? Mm -hmm. a so uh, very nice talk, really, um, I learned um, quite a bit. So let me ask so about Polchinski's uh, calculation. You know, so mm -hmm. Polchinski proves this rather rigorous inequality based on virial theorems and so on for the BFSS uh, model, in which uh, he uh, finds that in his normalization uh -huh. that the uh, you know, basically, uh, there is a there is an inequality that he finds about some quantity like trace of x one squared times trace of x one to the power four. So it's yes. like six six powers of, um, and this can be stated just in terms of just one of the matrices. Like let's say x one. Yeah, that, that's that's a fine, but you cannot even diagonalize one matrix. That's a point. So so all his argument uh, focuses on here. And uh, so, 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 so he, he, he and you know many other people checked here, yeah. and they found that it's uh, n squared times some power of lambda, right. or some power of energy. Mm. And uh, but you know any dependence doesn't change, and this part was uh, carefully checked. But the point is that even in one matrix model, right. you, if once you have a wave packet, you cannot really diagonalize it. So, so, uh, so here we cannot. So, point is that we don't have a matrix. That's the point. So, even in one matrix model, you cannot really diagonalize it. Can I mean, you uh, so, clarify uh, that. Uh, clarify that uh, uh, it's a gauged one matrix problem. I can always choose a gauge where the matrix is diagonal. Ah, uh, yes, yes. So, so uh, yeah. what I'm saying, what I'm saying is, uh, for example, uh, in uh, uh, in a uh, uh, Lagrangian formalism, you can. Uh, go to the gauge where matrix is uh, uh, diagonalized. Mm -hmm. But if you want to find the low energy, low energy wave packet in a quant uh, in Hilbert space, it's situation is just the same. If you have a Gaussian one matrix model, like here, this mm -hmm. got, so here it's a Gaussian matrix model, but uh, it, it, this, this argument applies to Gaussian one matrix model as well. So if you write down ground state in terms of matrix, you always have this. And so in this R, so in that case, you have R n squared dimension. 
And the point is that uh, if we want to relate uh, eigenvalue of a matrix to space time, mm -hmm. like, like it's, uh, so in a case of one, one matrix model, you can, uh, so in a, in a Lagrangian formalism, first you can uh, go to diagonal basis and go to free fermion, pic fermion picture, and then uh, you know, quantize fermion, you can do that. But if you want to identify uh, eigenvalue of bosonic matrices to naive to uh, deep brain location in this way, it already in one matrix model, it's very subtle. Um, Be so without going to fermion picture. So, so sorry, Masnuri, maybe, you know, like it might be uh, good to probably distinguish between matrix model and matrix quantum mechanics. I think what you're saying is that you cannot diagnose in matrix quantum mechanics, right? I mean, if, if, if it is a matrix model in the in the sense that, let's say, mathematicians understand just without any time. Yeah, and uh, also, also, uh, fine, here, right? yeah, and here also I uh, focused on uh, uh, operator formalism. Yeah, and okay. in, so people tend to use uh, path integral, and of course, in path integral, you can that you can uh, diagonalize x one, you can uh, you know uh, uh, restrict path integral to uh, the uh, part of uh, uh, integ integration space where x one is diagonal, for example. Right. But uh, configuration obtained that way is uh, related to uh, this uh, quantum state very indirectly. So, so, yeah. if, so if you want to relate the path integral configuration to a quantum state, probably uh, if you diagonalize one of the metrics, it's highly uh, non-trivial, I think. So, but at least you cannot identify diagonal entry of uh, X1 to be uh, the location of the brain quantum state. So mapping to quantum state becomes very co complicated. No, I, I understand that relating uh, the wave function for say the, the matrix quantum mechanics in the bosonic language, mm -hmm. I would write it as a functional of the density of eigenvalues, right? And that that is the right variable, right? Uh, I understand that, that that is of course complicated if we write it in terms of the x's, but mm, yeah, but so, uh, so it really depends on the, your purpose, I think. Yeah, but what I'm saying, saying is uh, if you want to relate uh, uh, some, you know, matrix and the uh, deep brain configuration, this is the way to go. If I, At if least I can that write deep, deep brain picture. But if I can write any configuration in terms of density of eigenvalues, I can write it entirely in terms of matrices. But uh, again, again, the problem is that uh, so you have this you have this web packet. Right. You have this web packet. So so the web packet contains various different uh, matrices, and once you specify ground state in terms of operator language, if you specify ground state, that contains uh, a lot of different uh, coordinate eigenstate, and then right. my question is which co coordinate eigenstate are you diagonalizing? So you cannot specify it. And uh, in term, if you in, in, in terms of path integral, you can uh, you know diagonal, you can say you diagonalize x one. But then in order to obtain ground state in operator formalism, you need a complicated uh, uh, sum of complicated uh, average of uh, different uh, path integral configurations. And path yeah, integral configuration and the state doesn't have one to one correspondence. So then, uh, then why do you expect from uh, one path into the configuration, you can extract uh, different distribution? That's a problem. Yeah, I, so, I yeah, yeah that, that's, so it's like a fixing one path into the configuration is like a, just a picking up one coordinate eigenstate from a web packet. I see. Yeah. But you know, if, as long as you calculate like a gauge, gauge invariant quantity, like trace x squared or trace of commutator square, to leading order in one point expansion, if you just pick up a typical uh, path integral configuration or typical uh, coordinate eigenstate in web packet, of course you get the right answer. But uh, location of uh, or 
location of the brains or you know geometry is a bit more subtle because you know you know in, so so in Joe, Joe's, Joe's paper you know he he of course realized that something is wrong and he clearly said that uh, some uh, uh, he he used the word fast mode and slow mode or quantum fluctuation and the classical mode and so so how to uh, filter out classical mode and uh, quantum fluctuation that was a problem. And uh, but the, the problem is that he thought just from this x, from this coordinate eigenstate, he tried to separate the uh, classical and the uh, quantum modes, and that was hard. And the problem was that he looked at only this one coordinate eigenstate. He had to look at the linear combination. As long as you are just looking at one of the one state, it's uh, impossible to uh, filter out classical mode. That was a problem. So let, let me try to understand this again, Masanori. Uh, so uh, in Pulchiski's picture, there is this uh, big blob, uh, you know, a, a, a uh, blob this... is of the size. Yeah, so I mean, I, I'm a bit uh, thrown off gear by your uh, normalization. In the normalization that I know where there the size of this is gn to the power one third. Uh, mm -hmm. so what my normalization is that the uh, uh, Lagrangian mm. is a trace, uh, so it's called the D0 brain theory. Lagrangian is a trace of uh, half of dtxi squared right. plus the uh, uh, coupling up here, here. Right. So if you use, uh, on the other hand, the DBI kind of normalization, like uh, appropriate for D, D, D0 brains, then and there then, will be the D brain tension sitting outside. And so, uh, yeah, with, with that, uh, I think, uh, I mean, this is the normalization that Polchinski uses. And then, uh, uh, right. yeah, the size of the eigenvalue distribution is given by GSN or G, G square N whole to the power one third. So, so this is square root of N changes probably changes to uh, one times uh, lambda to the one third times uh, one or something in his normalization i think that is right that that is, yes. right. That is right. and uh, so i hear also uh, uh so some power of lambda is uh, uh hidden here so i didn't i i just wrote uh, any dependence but uh, what i mean to say is that that's a that's a very big blob and the same uh, the same size as the, that of the supergravity region and that was yes, yes. that was the problem yes. and you were, you were saying actually the blob, blob the blob is much uh, much, much smaller. smaller so uh, in this case blob is uh, not this this is wrong and yeah. the size of the blob is this divided by square root n in this normalization in this normalization blob is this times 1 but you were still talking microwave. about the blob size in the nine dimensional space. I mean, you can, I can, I can accept the, what you said in the nine n square dimensional space. There, of course, they, they are well separable. I, I, I can imagine. Ah, good, good, good. So, so, so first, uh, so here, when I say this is order one or this, right. Right. it uh, uh, refers to ground state. Uh, ground state. So in this picture, I say that the ground state is localized around the origin of uh, this space. Hmm. So for this size of the blob, in my normalization is order one. In Polchinski's normalization, it's one over square root n. But we can take a non-trivial y. So this ground state corresponds to y equals to zero. Okay. And if y is uh, non-trivial, then it can give non-trivial distribution in nine-dimensional space um, uh, by right. diagonalizing y. But, but their, uh, so size, their grand, size is not their size is not given by the big big size that uh, so this we have one y one to y nine right they are n by n matrix right and uh, by diagonalizing uh, one of them or all of them we can define a distribution of d brain and uh, strings in nine dimensional space okay good so once we go back to nine dimensional space. Don't the blob size uh, uh, blobs uh, come big again? Right, so ground state, ground state. Yeah. 
is a uh, 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 of course, in a, if you have a uh, if you have a much generic backyard like a BPS and you know different sitting, different mm. location, it's a different story. But uh, imagine that all different are sitting on top of each other. If we imagine such such grand state, this is just all y equals to zero. So it, when you diagonalize y, it's just zero. So all nice. different are sitting at the origin, and no string is, is excited. But the generic grand, generic excited state can be written by using non-trivial white. Mm. Like uh, if you consider black hole, then uh, trace y squared is order n squared. So black hole mm. is uh, trace y squared is uh, order n squared. But the grand state trace y squared is zero. But uh, whether cool. you consider I but but if you don't take y and you take some uh, uh, generic point in a web packet, then trace x squared is always n square. But if you correctly look at the center of a web packet, then difference can be seen. So you were saying that Polchinski's calculation would be wrong about the. Uh, so trace uh, x squared, trace x squared. Trace x squared is n square, whether it's right. ground state or excited states. That's correct. So, right. so that's totally right. So, so, so that is uh, this part. This part is totally right. Okay. And uh, Porochinsky and the other people in the 90s, they checked this part uh, right. very detailed. So they thought maybe this part can change, but this part cannot change. But the problem is, uh, you know, so so I, so I, we say the eigenvalues, but then so maybe I should say this way. So you are talking about the eigenvalue of matrix, but the, what kind of matrix you are talking about when matrix is uh, not uniquely specified? So you have to define what is a matrix which characterizes the D brain location. So I, what I'm saying is grand, because ground state or low energy state are always a linear combination, just mm. taking a coordinate eigenstate does not make sense. So if you just pick up one coordinate eigenstate from wave packet, you cannot mm. specify different configuration. You have to see all, you know, en entire shape, shape of entire wave packet. Otherwise you cannot uh, see the different distribution. So the only difference between uh, Joe's argument and my argument is I'm claiming that we should see this uh, wave packet as a whole. And he picked up one typical configuration, typical uh, coordinate against it. And that can make a big difference. I see, okay, okay. Okay, thank you, thanks a lot. Okay, any more questions? Uh, hello? Uh, Mastery, mm -hmm. can, can can I ask uh, uh, some questions? So I, I had you know like um, one particular question, which is about you know so, so about how much of this, for example, applies to higher dimensions and so on. Like uh, uh, so so let you know like let, let me ask a uh, ask a particular question. Mm -hmm. So uh, you know like like Berenstein and various collaborators of his have been. Uh, studying these LLM geometries in uh, you know in, in the five oh, dimension, yes, yes. in ADS five context mm -hmm. and, and and so on, and uh, and and there they try to kind of uh, make sense out of you know like uh, um, you know how things are localized and so on and so forth in the bulk, mm -hmm. uh, in, you know uh, that's that's a part of their argument. They also talk about you know, like entanglement and various uh, mm -hmm. things, you know, yes. like uh, and yes. various kind of information measures mm -hmm. and, and things like that. So, uh, so, so let me ask, a, ask my question in that context. I mean, what you're saying, uh, how does it um, gel in with uh, those kind of statements? Like, would you say that those are consistent with it or, you know, like that they can be, that your statements are more general or? Um, so, Firstly, probably the work by David Bernstein you're mentioning is uh, so so they consider a BPS sector and write write down some effective yes, yes. matrix BPS, model. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, mostly and uh, and uh, so there are six scalars, and corresponding to that, there are six uh, matrix in matrix model, effective matrix model. And he was discussing, he was arguing that the eigenvalue distribution becomes like it's five. And uh, I'm not sure how uh, that's a, 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 it's restricted to BPS sector and uh, writing the effective theory. So I'm not sure how it's related because this uh, picture applies uh, as a full full theory not the BPS sector. And also grand state is probably just all X equals to zero rather than S5 like distribution. So I'm not sure how these two pictures are related. That's one uh, uh, short answer. And uh, also how it's generalized to, uh, so this, this, is, uh, this is for D brain, this expression for D zero brain, uh, which is, uh, zero plus one dimensional QFT in some sense. You know, quantum mechanics is zero, zero special, uh, quantum QFT with zero special dimension. And if you consider DP brain theory in a P plus one dimension, then uh, this uh, matrix X, uh, this, this one from one to nine minus P, but it can depend on uh, not just the time, but also x1 to xp. Uh, so instead of uh, talking about this space, we have we have to consider r times uh, nine minus p n square times we need some reg regularization. And if we use lattice regularization, number of lattice points come here. So at each lattice point, we have to specify the value of the scalar. And uh, in this gigantic Hilbert space, we have to look at the web packet. And the ground state should be, again, gauge variant and well localized, I think. But it, it, it's hard. <laughs> I haven't uh, uh, done the express calculation, to be honest. Yeah, I, I, I guess, you know, like uh, the reason for half VPS is that it is uh, access, you know, it is tractable, uh, uh, right? I mean, that's, uh, you know. Yeah, so that's, probably that's uh, half we, yeah, probably if we, we restrict to Q to be zero and Y to be diagonal, mm -hmm. then maybe it's close to half VPS. Maybe mm -hmm. we can consider restrict the uh, discussion to some, uh, sector then maybe we can relate yeah I, I was wondering like how how sharp can you make your arguments at least in this sector because in this sector we understand many things right uh -huh, you know, uh -huh. like, okay, you okay, know okay. like I mean uh, so so it would be a you know uh, because if I understand right you do intend uh, this kind of ideas to apply to half BPA sector also right? no no no, no, no yeah it, it should apply to any sector yeah yeah. So, so then, you know, like uh, the question would be that, uh, does it really, you know, like uh, work out in detail in, in, in that kind of uh, setup? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a very good comment. And uh, to be honest, I haven't thought about that. Yeah, okay. that's a uh, honest answer. But maybe uh, just uh, restricting this why to be some uh, specific uh, mm -hmm. configuration and yeah. introducing some gauge fixing term, maybe we can write down more explicit formulas. Yeah, and uh, and and one more question, mm -hmm. which is uh, unrelated, mm -hmm. uh, well, partly unrelated, which is about you know like your statements about uh, you know thinking about probes, mm -hmm. right? You know, like and uh, and uh, and uh, as you might know, I mean, there is some work on trying to kind of derive effective actions for probes, and mm -hmm. how you know like. That matches with some kind of uh, expectation from DBI and so on. Uh, yes, yes, many people try that. Yes, yeah, yeah. and so, I so, think I think we should use this uh, this Y matrix Y set of Y packet corresponds mm -hmm. to uh, uh, the location of the probes in that treatment. I think, and uh, of course, mm -hmm. in that kind of business, the problem is you know how how they can study strongly coupled sector. And in the case of the D zero brain, they say that uh, probably non renormalization wor works and weak coupling and the strong coupling or short distance and long distance are the same and uh, they can see some agreement. In general, probably we should use this kind of uh, 
So this is actually future direction, sorry. There are too many slides. One of the future directions. So Im imagine that uh, we introduce some uh, probe and the location of the probe and the momentum of the probe can be specified. And uh, for example, we can measure the energy as a function of y and q and whether that agree with the uh, what people expect for probe calculation. Mm -hmm. and, 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 I, go, go ahead. You think using this basis is uh, would yield a better way to think about these probe effective actions and so on? That's, uh, yeah, my, my guess, yes. But uh, I don't have a, a precise, uh, justif clear justification for this this specific setup. In a free limit, coherent state is, you know, reasonable. But mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm not sure what is a precise way to write down the brain probe. So, so this is one way of uh, specifying a uh, probe in matrix model, but the probe introduced that way precisely correspond to D brain probe or not is a, a bit non-trivial. But I think the, for example, if we uh, consider z Q equals to zero and Y diagonal Y, then probably uh, we can check BPS condition this way. So I, I think some new, with, after some numerics, we can uh, get uh, justify it, or maybe we can find a better way to define precise, precise way of uh, introducing a good probe in gravity sense. Yeah, there are much more way of introducing probes. <laughs> so that's uh, one of the problems at this moment. Okay, thank, thank you. Yeah. Okay, so any more questions? Okay, if not, let's thank the speaker once again. And uh, thank you very much. You yeah, thank hopefully you. I can visit India soon. <laughs> <laughs> we hope we hope so too, but yeah. I don't know how soon will be soon. But yeah. Uh, but uh, at least uh, uh, I'm uh, the one of the organizers which over the workshop which it's supposed to be taking place in one within a year or two <laughs> in yeah. ICTS. So <laughs> hopefully. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. See you guys. Thanks.